Saint Aviation, owned and operated by Jesse Saint, located in Central Florida. We have heard many good things about the aircraft and avionics work coming out of Jesse's shop, and we thought it's high time to pay him a visit. All right, everyone, I'm in Danella, Florida today, stopped by the Marion County Airport. I want to talk to Jesse at Saint Aviation, where they do builder assist for the Vans RV10. He has an avionics shop doing upgrades and new installations and is also a Dynon dealer. I'm Jesse Saint. I'm the owner of Saint Aviation. We started uh, building RV10s back in the early 2000s. Uh, soon after the RV10 became available, uh, we have a builder assist shop. We have a shop in Ecuador, South America, where we do builder assist um, for the majority of the kit, and then we bring it up here to Florida and finish the uh, finish the airframe, final assembly, engine, avionics here. Uh, we have built probably 25 to 30 airplanes, um, almost all RV10s, and uh, continue to do that. Um, a big part of my business currently is avionics, both experimental and certified, but we do a lot of experimental avionics, both in the RV-10s that we build and uh, just customer planes who want avionics upgrades. All right, Jesse, so, so what are some of the popular options people have wanted to order or have you maybe even do custom throughout the build process of these RV-10s over the years? I would say one of the most common upgrades would be interior stuff like the Aerosport products, um, panels and side panels and things like that. Uh, it's common to get an overhead console in so you can get air from the from the outside and, and blow it on your you know head face and whatnot instead of the the lower vents uh, which are stock. Um, we've developed some wing root fairings that uh, that dress up the base of the wing roots really nicely. Um, give it a little bit of speed and and really help aesthetically. What engine is used in this, and what is the most popular, I guess, that chosen for, from a customer? Um, the engine is the Lycoming IO540. Um, Vans offers a standard Lycoming engine. They also offer the Thunderbolt package, which is a little bit more tuned and polished and balanced. Um, there have been people that have done some aftermarket, you know, uh, V8 Corvette engines or Subarus, um, some people diesels. One plane was built with a turbine. Um, Vans actually made one demonstrator with the Continental engine, I think the IO360. Um, but right now, right now the only option is the IO540. And it's 260 horsepower. Some people will go a little higher compression to increase the horsepower. Or some people will buy an Aztec engine or something like that, which is uh, usually 250 horsepower. Um, I've seen a couple people do a carbureted engine, you know, a used engine. Um, with the carburetor, and that can be 250 or 260. Um, some 182 uh, 540s are 235 horsepower with lower RPM and or lower compression. So there's some people that, that will put a, a used or a rebuilt engine on, but as far as from the factory, the only option is the 260 horsepower engine. Some of the questions I like to ask builders, and obviously you're a builder, but a professional builder, um, is two questions. One is, what was the most enjoyable part, most fun of building these these kits? And also the flip side is, what's the most challenging or most difficult? Right. Um, most people that build an RV-10 uh, build it because it's popular, but also because it's a metal airplane, like all the RVs. The wings, fuselage, tail, it's all aluminum. It's it's more of a science, you know, if you have the right edge distance, the right size rivet, follow the plans. Um, it's pretty much just plugging through it. Um, one big difference with the RV-10 versus the other RVs is there's a lot more fiberglass. So the whole, the whole cabin top is one piece of fiberglass. The doors are fiberglass. The cowl and, and all the fairings are fiberglass. So a lot of people, when they're building these, will get through the metal and then they really get bogged down in the fiberglass. Because fiberglass is less of a science, more of an art. Um, as far as making it look good. So there's, I've seen a lot of projects over the years that get the cabin top almost fit and then they stall. 
So there's a lot of people that when they get to the fiberglass stuff, you know, if they're fiberglass people, they probably would have built the fiberglass airplane to start with. So when they build the metal, that they plug plug along. As long as they put the hours in, they uh, they make progress. But when you get to the fiberglass, the fitting of the doors, the gluing of the doors, fitting the cabin top, the cowl, the wheel pants, the uh, wing tips, and things like that, it's a lot. It's a lot different animal to to finish those parts, especially to make them look good and uh, make them look like a finished airplane. The most enjoyable part is you're building an airplane. You know, it's um, you go spend an evening in the shop, or you spend a Saturday in the in the shop, whether it's your garage or the hangar or wherever, and you normally are going to see progress at the end of those few hours. Again, especially when you're doing metal, um, they, Vans has you build the tail first. The vertical stabilizer happen. The vertical stabilizer goes together really fast, um, so you see progress. And as you as you build. Every time you, you start a new section, you see progress almost every time you build. So that's the fun part, and you end up flying it. You end up flying something you build. Great companies like Dynon Avionics at DynonAvionics.com. AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com. Airworks at AirWorksAviation.com. Avionation at AvionationUSA.com. Check the description below for links to these great companies and visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. If you like these videos that we are producing weekly, give that like button a click and engage all notifications so you don't miss a single episode. Currently, a big part of my business is avionics upgrades. Um, Certified planes and experimentals. Uh, there's a lot more flexibility in experimentals as far as what you can install, like the advanced flight systems panel you see here. Um, advanced flight systems is a great system for upgrading a panel because you might already have some things that are compatible with it. It's it's much more universally compatible. It works with a true track autopilot really nicely. Um, it sometimes will work with third-party engine monitor. Um, UAvionics uh, Echo UAT ADSB transceiver uh, works with the AFS. So um, that's why this plane has advanced flight systems. It started out with the earlier advanced flight systems. Just last year we upgraded to the 5600, the touch screens, aesthetic vision, all the newest features, which is now owned by Dynon. So all the remote boxes are Dynon. So that's a, that's a great question, right? Uh, Dynon owns both brands right, of advanced right. and uh, Dynon system. What is the real difference between the two now that they've got two brands? Um, they're, as far as the remote components, all the same stuff. So AFS has a different system behind it, a different uh, style of software. So a roundabout way, just, just from the surface, it looks like there's a slightly, a slightly different st styling, if you will, of the hardware itself, mm -hmm. being the interface, and then like you said, the software. Yeah, the form factor is different, and they have they have a 12 inch screen, they have an 8 inch screen, they have a 10 inch screen. Um, they have a lot more buttons and knobs on the screen than Dynan does. Um, so it's a very different system architecture, and user interface and stuff like that. Um, and, and you've installed both over the years, so it's really just a, a an option or a variety of, of things I've that... I've installed a lot of both. I started aviation when the D-10A was new um, with Dynan. We, uh, we built the first RV-10 with the with the Dynan EFIS D-10A and an EMS D-10. Um, so I've been installing AFS's since it was the 3000 series. Um, I've worked on some of their original engine monitors. Um, one thing I really like about the way Dynan and AFS have done things is all their engine monitors are pin for pin compatible with a few exceptions, with a few pins exceptions and the very early um, advanced screens had a separate box and that was that was a little bit different. But now if you wanted to if you wanted to take out say an advanced thirty five hundred or forty five hundred and put in a fifty six hundred, you can get the Dynan engine monitor module and just plug it in.
All right, Jesse, what do you got going on behind you here with this uh, RV10? Okay, so we, like I said, we do build RV10s. We have a builder assist program. It's a build program similar to the two week to taxi program that you might have heard of. Um, this RV10 has been flying. Um, brand new RV10, um, I think it has six hours on it. This one has a parachute, it has um, air conditioning, it has built in oxygen. It's a three screen uh, Garmin G3X panel. Vertical power VPX. He's got a Thunderbolt engine. He went with the uh, three blade composite Hartzell prop um, So we kind of pulled out all the stops on this one One of the things you'll notice different about this plane is if you've seen any planes with parachutes You got the you got the fairings down the sides that that hide the lines But they're visible in this one the guy wanted them not to be visible So we had us fill in and blend in the fairings so you can see you look at the back you can see the cut out where the parachute will blow out um, of course you don't want to build that up because it has to be able to break out when the when the rocket goes so um, plus on the fuselage we filled all the rivet holes so you won't see any rivets on the fuselage at all so what will be the price tag on one of these out the door after you finish building this one with the parachute with the air conditioning with the oxygen would probably be about 375 and that would probably be the not the norm but the upper limit of what you'd that's that's see. pretty much the upper limit and again with three garmin uh g3x screens any any plane with three screens is going to be is going to be expensive um the typical package includes two touch screens with autopilot and an ifr gps navcom and uh adsb in adsb out all the all the stuff that's necessary and it has come to be a standard all right jesse well thanks for the tour through your shop and explaining what you do here and explain a little bit more about Dynon and avionics. If someone want to get in touch with you to see about your services and schedule something with you, how would they do that? Uh, all my contact information is on my website, which is saintaviation.com. Um, you can email me at jesse at saintaviation.com. That's J-E-S-S-E -S -S -E at saintaviation.com. Uh, my phone number also uh, for text or um, phone calls is also on my website.